one of the most dreaded questions, if not the most dreaded question, and I have a chat about it right now, is, so tell me about yourself. Why is it, this is a multi-part SAT kind of question I'm asking you, Harriet. Why is it that most of us dread that question? Part one. Part two, what do they really want to know about me? And of course, how do I answer it? Go. Well, they do want to know about you. And I kind of tipped my hat a little bit with the woman I described um, earlier. But let me give you an example. And then I'll tell you the backstory. I'm going to do it the other way around this time. Um, I'm a transforma trans gosh, transformational global business executive. In fact, you could say I'm an artist at my core, both personally and professionally. It just so happens that I learned to paint and still do as a hobby when from about the age of three. And so when I approach painting, and or a business situation, I approach it like a blank canvas. I begin to visualize and imagine in my mind first what the possibilities could be. And then I go about laying out the approach or the strategy to bring that alive. Throughout my career, I've had several opportunities to build greenfield sorts of businesses in several organizations around the world. And so the perspective that I would bring here is that same ability to envision the possibilities. So that more or less was the tell me about yourself response to a gentleman who had been born and raised in Egypt, had learned to paint from the age of three, was educated in the US, um, starting at age 17, by the way, bachelor's degree through PhD program, became a fellow at a company, um, a, a chemical manufacturing organization, so joined on the technical research side, if you will, was then asked to go to Japan to join a team of individuals to transform a plant and then because of his performance there, um, incidentally, he picked up an MBA along the way, uh, then went to other countries in Asia for greenfield opportunities. And oh, by the way, what I forgot to mention, he also added sculpting to his uh, repertoire, if you will, while in college to offset the science classes. And so he would talk about transformation from the point of a sculptor. And often would you would add the Michelangelo quote, I could see the beauty in the stone where others could not. And then also talk about his artistic approach to transformation as well. I'm hearing this and I'm moved by it as I think many of us are and thinking that person went from anonymous or a piece of paper to a human with a short tale about themselves. And you're telling us as well, I think implicitly, we all have that story inside of us. It's waiting to be unlocked and unleashed, yeah? Well, it is, and he didn't realize it either. Um, how we came to that was at some point toward the end of the his coaching session, I said, you know, I could listen to you talk all day. There's something really, colorful and inviting about how you communicate. It's almost as if I can, you're painting pictures or something. And that's when he started chuckling and said, oh, my mother would love you. Guess what? <laughs> um, I, she forced me to learn how to paint at the age of three and on and on the story went. So that's how we were able to pull it together. So what happens is we all have a story. We all have nuggets within ourselves. We all have personal dots to connect about ourselves and often don't even think twice about it. It's just how we're wired, it's how we've approached things and so on. And so when we start to get at that kind of information, we ask people to write their stories and their background. And then through conversation about their early life, their college life and so on, 
we are unable, we are able, I should say, to pull out those nuggets where they might not have the ability to do so for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it happens through self-reflection, it happens through confirmation, it happens for through the assessment skill sets that we all have as coaches in order to help people go down that path and pull it together. Yeah, and I want to draw your, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? No, Continue. Right. I want to draw your attention to a chat that is coming at me because we hear this a lot, Harriet. The perception is that when I'm at the interview, I'm in pitch mode. I am selling myself. I am a product and I'm there to close a deal. Now, there's truth to that rumor. But what you just shared with us didn't sound like um, pitching and selling and hustling. Help us bring those two things together because there is a bridge there, yeah? Right, well, if I go back to the example that I mentioned about the Greenfield opportunities, of course, the next piece of that is to talk very specifically about that those, I should say, greenfield opportunities. So on this person's resume, it's very clear that why I was promoted or put in a position was to develop and build um, this particular business or plant in this particular country. And so beneath that, he can then talk about the government meetings he needed to have, how he got financing, how he staffed the organization, what some of the challenges were. There are many, many specific examples where we could, from a competency basis, talk about strategy development, execution, innovation, team building. I could go on and on, finance, and so on. You know, all of those skill sets come through. So you have to marry that with specific examples. I would call them stars because we use the behavioral interviewing model where you can clearly describe the situations or tasks, what actions you took and the results that brought that vision alive that he had in his mind as a mental model um, from that artist's perspective. How does that translate into a real life example? 